So I've got something a little bit different for a pro bike today because we are going to be comparing the bikes and components setup for two of arguably the biggest Uber bikers riding in triathlon right now. And the first one is the Cube Arium SLT that you can see here, which belongs to Andy Bocherer from Germany. And the second bike that we have is this Pinarello Blyde, which belongs to none other than Cameron Worth from Australia, who is the Kona Ironman Hawaii bike course record holder. Now let's get stuck into Andy's frame here and I'm quite excited to do this because I haven't seen one of these cubes up close and personal before so I'm looking forward to taking a look. And furthermore, we haven't featured one of these on the channel either. Now at first glance, there's some rather striking features if you ask me on this cube. Namely, at the front, the fork. I think that's a really striking set of forks that are, is, that are attached to this frame set. Um, the fairing that covers the brakes is very aero. We'll get onto that in a little bit. There's also, moving back behind the forks, a rather interesting cutaway that you can see there just back of the headset. So moving into the midsection of the frame, I am quite drawn to this bulky area of the frame here, which is quite unusual really, but in large part because of the connecting between the seat tube and the down tube, which then allows this design to bring the seat stays much further down than they usually are on any other type of brand of bike. Very unusual to see the chain stays and the seat stays really quite close together like this. So I think that's a really striking feature of this cube. One final point, Andy's riding a size medium. So moving on to the frame set on Cameron's bike. Now this Belide is still a very new bike on the market. It was only launched at Ironman Hawaii in 2018. And there's some fairly key features that we'll quickly rattle through on this bike. Most notably, it's a disc ready TT bike. Now we see that a lot more with the brands now releasing these versions of their TT bikes. Another thing that we see is an awful lot of care and attention paid to integration and storage for hydration and whatnot, and also nutrition. We can see that up here on the bento box, which is integrated into to the top of the frame, a setup stem so that that is a very clean line up there. Again, we've got a very large storage unit that's down here hidden away out of the wind, which just helps for all sorts of tools and other things that athletes might want to keep. And then another aspect of this frame that I really noticed having a look at, which you see staring front on, is just how wide the stance is on these forks. So it's really interesting to look at these bikes and see how technology is changing in the triathlon and TT market. And one other note on this bike of Cameron's is he's riding the 56 centimeter frame. Right, so let's take a look at Andy's cockpit that he has running on this cube. And we'll start with the base bar because that's a proprietary base bar that comes fitted with this frame. But after that, everything else is a little bit different. So we'll move on to the ski bar extensions, first of all, and they are Zip VUCA EVO 70s. 70s standing for the degree of rise or sweep that they have. And talking of rise, on top of his riser blocks, which look to be about 30 mils if you ask me, but I'm not entirely certain, I can see 15 degrees written in here. They're angled all the way back on the riser block. So I assume he's taken all 15 degrees of riser to move everything up a little bit. See that in a lot of the pro bikes just now. And then on top of all that, he's got some arm cups that I've not actually seen before. These are profile design arm cups, which look fairly snug and comfy on my um, reckoning. And while I'm looking at those armrests, I'm drawn to this very aero and interesting hydration or integrated hydration system that Cube have attached to the frame set here. It sits between Andy's armrests and this whole front section actually is removable, can be taken off. And what that then reveals is a little compartment that opens up in there, gives some space, which Andy has his um, junction box for his gears tucked away in there. So totally hidden and out of the way from the wind. So that's really interesting. And then one other point of interest that I noted on Andy's front end is that there's no bike computer here. So possibly that gets added on just for race days. And before we move on from the front end, we must talk about the gears. Now Andy has his blips just electrical taped on here, which is quite unusual. Usually they're woven underneath the bar tape, but he hasn't opted for that. He's got his clickers up here on the end of the aero bars. And then one final thing to talk about on the front end is Andy's brake levers. And they are like the base bar, proprietary from Cube. And they're for stopping via these brakes that are hidden under this fairing. So I think now it's time that we take a look at Cameron's front end. So moving on to the cockpit on Cameron's bike and compared to Andy's, the first noticeable difference I see is this base bar setup, whereas Andy had a completely 
flat base bar that you see in a lot of time trial bikes. This most one piece stem and base bar setup that Cameron is running curves down. So that's a little bit different. You don't see that on so many base bar designs. So I guess that's an aerodynamic advantage that they've worked out, but there's quite a different drop between here and the top of the base bar, I guess, that I can see looking forward from the front of the bike here. So that's interesting. And then moving up to the armrests and aero bars on cam setup. Notice all of these riser blocks that he has here. It's quite a lot of them to bring him up into his preferred position. I'm guessing there's 35 mil here because I can see three blocks plus a, a half size one. So that's my hunch. And at the very top of that, we've got quite an angled shim that Cameron has here just to bring him up into that preferred position that he needs for his aerodynamics. So that's the setup there to bring us up to his aero bars. He's got a slight angle to the ski bend here again for the wrist flexion you see in a lot of these TT bikes with the pros and on the armrests here there's no branding on these armrests so I'm not really sure what they are exactly but Cameron does do a lot of training with the Team Sky setup so maybe he's got some sort of prototype here I'm not quite sure there's certainly a lot of holes drilled in the armrest itself I guess to save some weight and then just a really simple bit of foam padding stuck in on top cut down to match the size of the armrest so moving between the aero bars, Cameron has the Carbon X-Lab set up, a base plate here which holds the X-Lab torpedo water bottle that he just has sitting nicely between his arms for his um, refilling at the aid stations. And then sitting just to the front of that, unlike Andy, I will note, he's got a bike computer mount to keep all his data there when he's racing. So moving on to Andy's group set now, and we have got this very aerodynamic SRAM one by group set. Missing a front derailleur, obviously, because we're just running that solitary single chain ring at the front. And in terms of numbers, that is a 52 tooth chain ring, which is pretty big on one by standards, but I'll get back to that in a moment. Moving back to his cassette, this is 12 speed, of course, because it's SRAM one by. So he's got 10 through to 33 on this setup. So that's a very big range, but that 10 to 52 is something in the region Region of a 56 chain ring on a regular two by setup. So that is a big gear as I was saying, or 5611 should I say so. Very big gear indeed. The cranks on here are a 170 mil crank and we can also see his integrated cork power meter on that chain set. Finish it off with the SRAM ETAP rear derailleur of course and a regular SRAM chain. So now moving on to the group set on Cameron's bike, and I guess this is the most noticeable difference between the two bikes, because quite clearly Andy was running one by on the SRAM group set, but this Shimano group set has two chain rings and a front derailleur. And that large front chain ring is a 56 tooth, and that inside smaller one on Cameron's bike is a 39 tooth, which is quite a large gap between those two chain ring sizes. Cameron's got 170 mil length cranks on his bike. He's got Shimano Dure's rear derailleur for that DI2 group set to be completed, and he has an 1128 cassette. So moving on to the wheel set on Andy's bike now, and I think this rather nice set of zip wheels complement Andy's cube frame really well, just because of that black carbon colorway that he's got going on this frame set. But in terms of that front wheel up there, that is a Zip 858, so very good looking wheel to have up there on the front of the bike. Zip Super 9 disc here on the back. He is running Continental Grand Prix tires on both of these wheels, 23 mil on the front and a 25 mil on the back. But even more interestingly, because I haven't seen this before on a pro triathlete's bike at least, he has got a different tread pattern on the front to the back. So the front has a little bit more tread woven into that Grand Prix and this one is, well, it's pretty much slick. So all that being said, I'd be interested to see what's on Cam's wheel set. So moving on to the wheel set on Cameron's bike, and this is another significant difference because whereas Andy had the Super 9 Zip and 858 front combo, this is a wheel brand I haven't actually come across or heard about before, but Cameron is explaining to me that this Princeton Carbon Works wheel set is quite a new forward-thinking American brand who, as you'll maybe notice, has a front wheel design very similar to that of the Zip. And Cameron is really excited to be riding these, it says that they're extremely lightweight and very happy with this 65mm front wheel and the disc that he has there on the rear to complement it. 
So now the tires that are on these Princeton wheels on Cameron's bike are Continentals. He's got the Grand Prix TT on the front, 23 mils. This also, like Andy's, has a tread pattern on that front tire just to make sure you're safe going around the corners. But unlike Andy's bike, who had a completely slick tread on his rear tire, we've got some tread on that Grand Prix 4000 that Cameron has on the rear. And that, much like Andy's, is a 25 mil as well. So moving on to the last few bits, finishing off Andy's bike, and I'm going to start with the saddle. And I think this is quite interesting because I'm pretty sure that saddle has seen more than one or two bikes. I think Andy's been swapping that over the years because he's just comfortable in it. And that's something you see quite a lot of athletes do. That's even just got aluminium rails, which is fairly unusual these days, usually carbon rails on saddles. And whilst we're up there looking at the saddle, notice this little um, bracket that comes onto the proprietary seat post on this Cube bike, just allows uh, aero water bottle for rear hydration to get attached onto there. Just got a, another Cube product there, Cube water bottle. Talking about water bottle cages, there's none others on this bike because he's got that aero hydration system at the front that he can drink from when he's in his aero tuck. Tucked in just behind that, we've got another little bento box for gels and whatnot that I presume Andy has in there on race day. And then finishing off the bike, Andy has got some Durace pedals. So I wonder what Cam has finishing off his bike. So the last few bits and pieces to talk about on Cameron's bike. First up is his saddle choice. Now this is the Physique Arione, which has got a grippy surface on the top here just to stop you sliding around when you're on your aero position. Off to the rear of that saddle, he's got an X-Lab aero pouch, which you don't see very often. So I was asking Cameron the reasons for this choice. And he was saying that what he likes about this pouch that wraps around the bottle cage is it just gives him something to tee off of when he's dumping his water bottle into the cage. It means it stops him missing the cage and he just finds that really useful. Now this little zipper at the back of the pouch has some space and in there he keeps his spare tube for the rear tire and his spare tube for the front tire, well he keeps down here in this integrated storage setup that comes with the frame set. Finishing off with this extra bits and pieces on his bike are his pedals which are titanium spindled speed plates. Now I've really enjoyed looking at these two bikes that belong to arguably the best riders in our sport right now. And hopefully you've enjoyed this different format of pro bike video too, so please let us know in the comments section down below. Find the globe on screen for all the other content that we have here in GTN, and don't forget to give this a thumb up like button if you enjoyed the video too.